brush. Copy. Boom. Control V. All right, I'm going to mute myself in Teams so that you guys can avoid the echo. Please click on the link to join me in the left in the lesson. <laughs> Yay. You guys are super quick hopping over into this. All right. Just giving you a few more minutes to figure all that out. Get yourselves where you need to be. drop your your pencil sharpener and you're just so afraid it's going to explode everywhere and dump the pencil shavings. All right, I've got eight of you in here. I already have two likes and I haven't done anything. Wowee. <laughs> That's pretty awesome. A few more should join in. Maybe, perhaps... All right, 11. Welcome, welcome, welcome. We are continuing yesterday's lesson on the artistic techniques that are associated with illustration pens. We looked at three different common artistic techniques that artists use uh, when working in this medium. We have hatching, cross hatching, and stippling. When you're working with all of these, whether they be parallel lines, crisscross lines, or simple dots, when you place them, the markings closer together, you get a darker value. And as you disperse them, as you spread the marks apart, you get lighter values. So artists can use these marks to create a sense of value and form. Okay, to have light and dark, you can create form, 3D form, uh, by condensing or dispersing the marks. Now, it does matter your neatness, your mark making, the quality of the mark making that you're putting down on the page does matter. So if you're rushing with your hatching and cross hatching and you aren't lifting your pen up before you bring it back in the opposite direction, so you're, you have a downward stroke, and if you don't lift, and you pull it back up, you start to get these little fish hooks, okay? And that's kind of sloppy, unless that's the texture you're going for, right? So try to avoid those fish hooks. The trick to get, getting rid of them is slowing down and working at the pace that your muscles can keep up with in order to lift the pen up before moving back, okay? So it's not just a scribble. Same thing goes for the stippling. They should be nice little dots, perfect little circular dots on the page. They should not look like hair, okay? There shouldn't be a dash, all right? You don't need to pound hard and stab your book in frustration. Um, it's just a touch, okay? If you push too much pressure on your lovely illustration pens, you're going to ruin them. And that's sad, we don't like that. They're lovely things. Um, we also managed to get into texture and form 
in the first lesson, we played around with the creation of form with just your traditional sphere. Hopefully you've drawn a sphere with pencils already and you already have a good concept of highlights, midtones, shadows, and cast shadows, maybe even reflected light off the surfaces. So practice that knowing how to draw a sphere, knowing how light works to create the illusion of 3D form is super important in art. Then we started to have fun. We're playing around being a little creative and we messed around with the texture of fur and we had fun, like why not? We had a little fun, we put a little face on here um, and we're gonna do the same thing as we move through all of these. So we did this little furry guy. Um, Fur should not have a solid outline. We did six penciled in circles to guide us, but as you can see, when we're done, you don't see the pencil. You can even erase it. So make sure that those lines are light. We don't want to see them later. They're just guidelines. And that makes it so we don't need to feel like we have to outline anything, especially when it doesn't have a visible outline. Fur's all broken and fun. So there you go. Hope you had fun with your furry critter. Make sure that it has highlights and shadows and cast shadows to make sure that it feels as though it's round. Then we moved on to lizard scales. Lizard, lizard, lizards. Um, they are such a wonderful texture because there's so many different kinds of textures happening all in one critter. You've got your hard armor-like thick leather shell. Of, of a lizard, maybe even some um, spikes coming out of it. Again, these are just created my uh, imagination critters. Uh, when you do draw them, this is just my opinion, start from the eye and work your way out. It seems to radiate the grid work, the broken lines of, of scales tend to come out from the eye and work down the body. Okay, same thing for the fur. It just kind of starts at the head and moves in a direction that is from head to tail. Okay, and pretty much all animals, except for a few weird dog breeds, like a Rhodesian Ridgeback, their fur on their back actually grows in the opposite direction. But that's awesome. That's them. We're not going to judge. <laughs> Nice dogs. Um, yeah, so I was working with a number one on this a micron pen. I like the microns because they have archival ink. They are waterproof and they won't fade. So this is a really nice pen. It won't bleed either. Some really cheap markers you go and you put, or pens, you go and put it on the piece of paper and you can actually see the edges of the ink bleed and, it, and bleed through the page. This is lovely. There's nothing bled through. I love my micron markers. Sorry, pens. Oh, using the wrong word. So I come back and I'm looking at this and I'm reflecting upon the work that I did last time. And I've noticed that I don't have very uh, distinct highlights and shadows. So I'm going to imagine that my light source, I drew a little sun, that my light source is coming from the top right. He's looking up into the sun. So things that are dark would be away from the sun, so maybe his upper lip is casting a shadow over his lower lip. And that down here, maybe it's a little darker. Maybe I'm going to make the rolls of his soft underbelly neck skin have some shadow in it. And I'm going to use a combination of stippling and hatching because I want to keep it light. I don't want to be too dark. And I think that stippling does a good job at emphasizing the lizard-like flesh. And these horns back here. Now these are your critters. You guys decide what they're going to look like. I want these thick skinned armor to feel like they have some form as well. So I'm going to add shadows. 
maybe bring up that scaly texture, that rough leathery texture with some more stippling. I like stippling. It's so time consuming, but it's rewarding. I think that's the same thing for everything about art. You know, you put in the time and you're rewarded with good work. Work that you can be proud of. And it's not a bad idea to warm up before you jump into your proper drawings like these guys. We, yesterday we warmed up by practicing the artistic techniques. And I don't want you to jump into these last three things without a good warm up. We're going to warm up those teeny tiny muscles in our hands and make sure that they're ready to work with the fine motor skills that it requires to do this. Creepy little lizard eyes. So warm your hands up, do a little stippling, do a little cross hatching and hatching. Increase that feeling of leathery lizard skin. Think about where you're putting your marks. And there's nothing stopping you from having an image of a lizard up on your screen as a reference so that you kind of know what's going on, right? Feels good to know where things are going and, and what's about to happen. All right. So this next circle, I'm going to draw a fish. So we're going to play around with fish uh, textures. A light coming in through the window. Nothing I can do with that. <laughs> it's nice to have sunshine. Okay, so if you want to pull up a picture of a fish to help guide you, maybe you can take inspiration from that as well. But <clears throat> it's similar to... Um, the lizard scales, in a sense, they've got a really interesting pattern. Um, and it's going to work from the eye out. So let's start with an eye. I'm recording a video live stream. All right. There we go. They've got like this big old gross pupil. <laughs> and just like the lizard, they've got some rings around their eyes so it can move around inside, you know, the hard uh, fish body. And let's add some fishy lips. Again, this is your creature. We're not going for any kind of like specific species of fish. We're just setting down the, you know, the base of what is fish. <laughs> what is fish? Well, they got a mouth. They got big old fishy lips. It's kind of hard, smooth texture around their faces. But then when it gets to the gills, things start to change. The texture starts to change. So I've got my gills here. We're going for a circle shape again, just because it'll unify with the other bits and pieces. So with this one, we can, woo, we can put a bit more of a traditional outline, a contour line because they are smooth. Their, their scales are quite smooth. 
Um, but we can break the outline with a couple flippers. Let's put some flippers in before we get into the texture. So when I do flippers, or fins, sorry, fins, I do a couple lines, parallel lines that kind of fan out. And then just connect the tops. Boop, there we go. It's not too hard. You can do one along the top. We can do a little dorsal ridge. Boom, couple lines coming out the top. These are fun to make. You decide how long you want your fish's head to, uh, dorsal fin, sorry, to be. And you can either go up and around or you can sink in. Your lines can sink in. There you go. Those are those spiny quills that hold it up or flatten it down depending on the fish's mood. They can be thicker or thin depending on how you want your fish to look. And then of course, we need a little fishy tail. We're running out of space. <laughs> so I'm just gonna have a stubby tail. All right, he's happy. So we've got the general shape of our fish down. We've got fishy eyes, fishy lips. We've played with some gills, put those down. Can't forget the gills. And then a variety of fins and a fishy tail. But the scales are a whole different thing. So they tend to start after the face. And we can go, I'm going to twist my book around so that my hand is pulling the marks towards myself. Okay, it's easier to pull the line, you have more control. Okay, and I'm just going to draw little U shapes. Now not all fishies have U shaped scales. Some have more like a hexagonal scale or triangular or rectangle. We're just going to go for a stereotypical U shape. I want you to have the experience of repeating a pattern and this pattern isn't going to run off the edge of the fish. It's going to follow the contour. It's going to go around and head towards the tail. So even on this side, the top, the bottoms of my U's, the round part of the U is heading and pointing towards the tail. We're working our way across the form of the fish with U-shaped patterns. I know you can do it. <laughs> I like to work from the head back. And once you get in the groove, not too difficult. Try to keep them relatively the same shape, size, sorry, and shape, yeah. There we go. So we have 
the flat image, all the shapes that we really need to get this to look like a fish. We've, we've put down the scaly textures, the different types of textures of the face, the fins and the scales, but we're missing a very, very important communication tool um, that will breathe 3D form, that will breathe life into this fish. And that is value, the black and white shadows. So if my light source, we're gonna keep the same one, is coming from the top right hand corner of the page, then this part of the fish will be in light and this part of the fish will be in darkness. And we need to imagine that it's a sphere, just like this. So we're gonna apply this idea, this concept of shade, shading onto this fish to create a sense of form. So if my fishy is darker down here, let's start with the body, okay? So put some hatching and cross hatching on the underside of this fish, right over top of the scales. It's all good, okay? The texture you'll still see peeking through the lines, the hatching lines. Okay, and the gills are raised, so we're gonna put a little bit of shadow under there and some shadow under here. His kissy fishy lips, his trouty mouth. Ooh, that's fun. And I want this fin to stand out, so we'll put a little bit of a shadow under there to show that it was close to the body. If you want it to seem, ooh, if you want the fin to seem kind of transparent, you can hint that the body's there. Look at that. And you can just darken it a little bit. So I just continued these two lines. I connected them with stippling. And I'm just going to hint that it's semi-transparent by darkening this part of the fin. Neato. This is where that patience will pay off. Ooh, look at that. Now it looks like it was, ah, oh, yeah, that worked. I'm gonna repeat that stippling on other parts of fins and tails. So it creates a sense of unity. So where I'm going to imagine shadows on the, the dorsal fin and the tail, I'm going to be putting stippling. And that repetition of that artistic technique will create a sense of unity across that whole critter. Now some, nobody's perfect, myself included. Some of these fins I'm going to just randomly, there's not much, just go with your gut, go with your style. I'm going to put just the slightest emphasis on the bottom edge of some, not all, some of these scales. So it'll seem like they kind of come out, see that? And it's just repeating the line, just going over a spot. Even down here in the textures, keep it random. There we go. Not too shabby, eh? <laughs> okay. 
All right, I'm giving you a couple seconds to keep up with me. If you are keeping up and you are using a bit of a visual reference to guide you on the sidelines, let's pull up a picture of a uh, bird. Let's look at feathers next. And I think it's important to find uh, a, an image where you can actually see individual feathers. A little bit, you know. Don't choose one that's like a picture where the colors are super solid. So, all right, let's talk about feathers now. Usually, I do a big crane-like looking bird, but I think I'm gonna do a little cute, fluffy one today because we need some cute, fluffy things in our lives sometimes. So, uh, like I did with all the other ones, let's start with little bird eyes, and this one, this little bird. I'm gonna go like a fish, but I'm going to leave a shiny spot. So leave a white circle inside a black circle like that. Well, it's small for you guys to see, but that's what I've done. <laughs> Give yourself the eyelids. And then let's just hatch out towards the nose and we're going to throw on the beak, okay? And my little bird is going to be singing a song. So just triangle shapes. Nothing too crazy. We're going to put the beak in fluff. So kind of like the fur, just give it a little fluffy marking. Little squiggly line. Don't overthink it. Now, his head feathers, because he's telling everybody, stay off my turf. So we'll fluff up his feathers a little bit. And those are just some jagged hatching marks, all going from the eye out, eye out. Same thing as all the other ones that I've talked about from the eye out towards the tail. All right, as we move across this spherical, fluffy little bird thing, again, we're not going for any specific species. We're not looking at chickadees or sparrows or anything like that. We're just making up our critters today. Um, that way, whatever you put down isn't wrong. <laughs> when we reach the wing, which I'm going to put out here, the wing, the type of feathers on a bird's body changes based upon the way the bird uses that feather. So for some on the head, it's just a crest. It's just to show off to the other birds how tough and awesome they are. Some like on the body, like on the tummy, it's meant to keep them warm uh, on those cold days. But then when we get to the wings and the tail feathers, those have a very different purpose use for a bird and that is to help them fly. So I think it's really important for an artist to spend some time learning about wings and the anatomy of wings because everybody wants to put a wing on something. You know, you wanna draw a Pegasus, a winged horse or this wing or that winged and they, or, or person with wings. And they just go and do that all that, you know, the woo. Now it has wings kind of an image. We are so far beyond that. Okay, kids, we're not making those those McNuggets anymore. We're we're gonna study the anatomy of a wing. There's fluffy parts, and then there's the flight feathers. And you may not know the actual proper words for these, but that doesn't matter as much as getting it right. S 
So there's layers to the wings, to the feathers. And usually if you go for three, the part that attaches the wing to the body, like its shoulder, this part, which is the next level out, and then the long flight feathers, then you're gonna have an accurate, or at least a more believable wing. All right, so I've got those down. I'm gonna finish this fluffy body before we start talking about other things. This little cutie is, yes, it is just a little circle. And I'm using jagged, ragged marks. Don't overthink it, relax, have fun with this. Along the back, the feathers are a little bit more smoother, more streamlined. And then we can, oh, let's, the tail, where are we gonna put this tail? <laughs> it's having too much fun making it round. All right. There we go. Our bird has a tail now. And that, again, those feathers are long and straight like the wings. When you pop legs onto this little guy, have your, okay, so you have your outside edge, the contour edge of the, the bird, Put, your, put another squiggly line just up a bit and stick one leg out of that line. This is a very weird looking little bird. Then when you do the next one, okay, to make it seem as though the leg is coming from the other side of the body of this bird, you want it to come off the contour line. So this one feels like it's on one side of the bird. And then when we do it off the contour line, straight off that edge, it feels like it that it's coming off the other side. I am not sure where it's gonna go though, because I didn't draw a branch. <laughs> Whatever, we're just talking about textures. <laughs> something, something, something. Here's a branch. <laughs> oh, it's great. Its legs are crisscrossed, totally wrong. <laughs> this one should be up here, whatever. So let's just keep adding some fluff to this bird and we will make it become a little bit more 3D form. And I'm using some lines to show the feathers, show the fluffiness of it. It's super cute. These ones, again, the lines will be going in the same direction. All of them are trying to continue and underline that feeling of roundness. The contours of it. If you wanna add patterns to the, the feathers, you can do that. Remember, this is your critter. You can design it the way you want. So under here, under the wing, since it's overlapping, it's going to cast a little bit of a shadow. So I'm going to Emphasize that with hatching, cross hatching, and a little bit more thicker lines. And that will 
push the, the wing forward and push the tail area back. And again, just like we did with the sphere, just like we did with the fish and all the other critters, we're going to try to emphasize the 3D form by adding shadows. The lines that I use are going to emphasize and complement the form of this bird. And then just the more details you put on, the more believable it becomes. There we go. And there's my bird. I'm going to give you a few seconds to figure that one out. Okay. All right, and let's draw another species of animal that I commonly see students drawing, um, and it's an exoskeleton. So that means a uh, insect or crustacean where they have an outer shell that is hard, and then they have all their squishy, juicy bits on the inside. Yes, gross. So <laughs> I've queued up um, an image of a crab. Um, it actually has a really cute face. So if you want to bring up an image of a crab or a shrimp or um, some kind of an insect like an ant that has that, a beetle. Ooh, beetles are fun too. Um, uh, ladybugs, any kind of insect that has that hard outside shell and the squishy inside. Crunchy on the outside and chewy on the inside. Delicious, yuck. Um, <laughs> so we're still gonna try to stick to that idea of a round sphere. We're gonna start with good outlines because this texture of a crustacean is not fluffy or scaly or anything like that, it has a solid shell. And that makes life a little easier for us because we get to actually draw that solid shell. So I'm drawing the top part of a shell. And now I will add in the eyes. All those other animals, we were drawing the eyes first, but I felt like <laughs> that this little guy needed his body established first. All right. Put his gross little mouth bits in there. And those are just like ovals. We're not going to get into like hyper realistic because we're more about the just taking our first look at these creatures and figuring out what's going on. So I've drawn the top part of a shell, 
his gross little crabby face. And a very simplistic underside of the shell. Okay, I'm just simplifying it. It's when we get into the legs that things get interesting. So ants, bugs, insects, bees, and all these crustaceans have these segmented legs where they've got, you know, one part connected to another part, connected to another part, you know, and depending on what the critter is, how many sections it has to make the legs. And that's where they're, that's where the bends happen. Um, oh gosh. So on and so forth. Okay. So they're just basic shapes. Okay. Instead of having, you know, our, our, our type of leg. <laughs> so that being said, let's try to add segmented legs to our crab. I'm going to do these, the pinchy kind first, and they're going to come out of the body. I'm gonna pull bigger brush, bigger pen. I'm gonna get out my O5. I want these to be dark. Making sure that my mark making is complementing the form of the creature. There we go. I wanted his pinchers to look dangerous, so I added some more color, um, some more value. So we're going to use a little bit of overlapping as well here. Do the same thing over here. One, two, and then um, And then these back legs, you can't really see. So we'll just hint at them back here because he'd have six legs and two pinchers. So I'm gonna put these back two legs hiding back there. Now we've got, just like before, we've got the general form of, or shape, sorry, shape of our crab, of our crustacean, but there's no form yet. There's no 3D form. And we have to add the value. We have to think about how would the light be affecting this creature? 
And where would the highlights, midtones, and shadows be? We're always asking ourselves that. Okay. So I'm going back to my level, my number one micron pen. And I'm using a logical mind. I'm thinking about this crab. This crab has the light source coming directly from above because that's where the sun is, is hitting it. So anything that's below it is going to have a cast shadow. So this will be the highlight up here and the tops of these legs will have a highlight, but the underside of him will be in shadow. So the marks that I make will complement, will reinforce the idea of the form of this little critter. So that top carapace of the, the shell will overlap a little bit. And I have to create the shadows that communicate that to the viewers. It looks a lot more creepier now. <laughs> I want a bit more gradation here. I hope as you're hatching and cross hatching your critters that you find that happy zen calming effect of this repetitive motion, repetitive task. I hope it soothes your frantic self. All feeling a little frantic lately, eh? In there. All right, now for the legs. Remember each section goes inside the next section or go, comes out from the next se section. So try to show that. Stippling can also help with the texture like we did with the, the lizard. going and when things are super close to each other and we've observed this in our life drawings right when we are drawing shoes and tools and things that are on or really close it runs out of light right so you can see the sh the, sh the shadow that my finger is casting see when there's lots of light that can get underneath and around the shadows faded, but as things get, as the finger gets closer to the page, the shadow gets darker and darker and darker until there's no more space for the light to get into and it creates a much more dark shadow. Okay, so apply that idea here to the crab. So when things are close together, touching, overlapping, close, close, close your shadow is going to be darker. But as they move away from each other, things are going to get lighter. Sure, this is an imagined and created creature. We're not going for any specific species, but in order to sell it, 
to the viewer and convince the viewer that this is like something to be believed in, then you have to apply logical lighting There, I'm going to repeat these dark tips to match the claws to the rest of the critter. So draw each section and think of it as its own individual little sphere. So back here, I know the light's going to hit up here, even though it's behind on the other side of the body. There we go. One thing I like about illustration pens is that it keeps you honest as an artist when you can't erase something. Like, this is my mark. This is what I've done. This is what I've put down. And if you do make a mistake, then it forces you to be even more of a creative thinker and to figure out how are you going to make this problem transform into a happy mistake. <laughs> How are you going to change it to work to your benefit? And that's a good exercise to, to force yourself to make a problem turn into a happy situation. Um, and to persevere. All right. You can add a little texture, maybe use a bit of a thug crab and he's got some scratches on his carapace, on his shell. Not too shabby. Oh, we need a cast shadow. <laughs> I 
I'm just gonna hint at things. I don't want the top of his shell to feel like it's very different from what I've done to the legs. So I'm gonna add just a bit more of that stippling to create that sense of unity for this little guy. This cute little face. All right, if you are a public viewer, thank you for watching. Remember to stay awesome and be creative. And if you are one of my students and you're done, sign the bottom right hand corner of the page, snap a picture and submit it to the online classroom. And for everyone, remember, thank you very much for watching. Subscribe to my channel, click on like, whatever you wanna do and uh, stay awesome and be creative. Until next time.